All right, in this video, I would like to talk about complex numbers. Uh, but first, recall the previous video where we were introduced to the imaginary unit. i is the square root of negative 1, is the imaginary unit. And once we made that definition, then i squared was the same thing as negative 1. All right, so that allowed us to take, say, the square root of negative numbers, right? So, like, the square root of negative 9 goes to 3i. And the square root of negative 9 is 3i because, well, 3i, if you square it, gives you 9i squared, and i squ squared is the same thing as negative 1, so this is the same thing as negative 1 times 9, which is just negative 9, right? And remember, that's the whole point of taking the square root. What number can you find that when you square it, you get the radicand, right? In this case, what number can you square to give you negative 9? Well, that number is 3i, and here's, you know, the reason why. Right, 3i squared is the same thing as negative 9. Right, so that was all previous, the previous video. So now we want to expand this out to what are called complex numbers. All right, so note, a number of the form a plus bi. Right, so you have one number that, that's got two parts to it, right? Where a and b are real numbers, i is the imaginary unit. Right? So any number of this form, a plus bi, it's called a complex number. Right, so A is called the real part of the number, and B is called the imaginary part of the number. If B equals 0, then the number A plus BI is called a real number, and that's because you'd have 0 times I, which is 0, and you would just have a real number. I'll give you an example in just a second. Right, if A equals 0, but B is not equal 0, then the number A plus BI is called an imaginary number. So for example, so if you have something, say, like 2 plus 3i, right? So 2 is the real part, and 3 is the imaginary part. It's the coefficient of the i that's the imaginary part, okay? So the real part, the imaginary part. And if you had something um, like, say, negative 7i, right? Well, that's the same thing as 0 minus 7i. Right? We just don't write the 0, but the real part would be 0, and the imaginary part would be negative 7. And then, if you just have, uh, you know, number 9, say, right? 9's a real number that we've played with for, you know, a very long time now. But 9 is the same thing as 9 plus 0i. So here the b is 0, the imaginary part is 0, and the real part is 9. All right, so this negative 7i, where the uh, real part is 0 and the imaginary part is negative 7, that negative 7i is just called an imaginary number. And then over here with the 9, where the real part is 9 and the imaginary part is 0, that is a real number, those numbers we've been playing with for, for a long time. And they're all called complex numbers. So every real number that we've been playing with is also a complex number. It's just that its imaginary part is 0. So our number system has been expanded. We've taken the, the real numbers and said, hey, they're really a subset of um, this set called the complex numbers. Every real number is a complex number because the imaginary part is 0. But not every complex number is a real number because here are two examples. 2 plus 3i is a complex number, but it's not a real number. And negative 7i is a complex number, also referred to as an imaginary number because the real part is 0. Uh, but neither one of these numbers are real numbers. All right, so our number system has been expanded. All right, one of the cool things about complex numbers is that the arithmetic on complex numbers um, is fairly straightforward. For example, if you want to add two complex numbers, you just combine like terms, right? So this would be 2 plus 4 would be 6, and 7i minus 9i would be negative 2i. So you get the new complex number 6 minus 2i, very similar to just combining like terms. All right, and then to subtract two complex numbers, uh, very similar to subtracting polynomials. Distribute that negative through first. So you have 11 minus 2i, and then distribute the negative 1 through, you'd have plus 3 plus 5i. Everybody see that? And then you just combine up like terms. And so we would have 11 plus 3 is 14, negative 2i plus 5i is plus 3i, and that's our new complex number. All right, so adding and subtracting complex numbers, very similar to just adding and subtracting polynomials. All you're doing is just combining like terms.
All right, multiplying. Well, this is all multiplication. Negative 5 times i times 4 times i. All right, well, we can write this as negative 5 times 4, which is negative 20, and then i times i, which is i squared. And then we say, hey, wait a second, i squared is negative 1. So we can rewrite this as um, negative 20 times negative 1. And negative 20 times negative 1 goes to just 20. All right, so negative 5i times 4i is just 20. What about negative 3i times 10 minus 15i? Well, it looks like here we have one term multiplied times multiple terms, and so we're going to use the distributive property just like we did before. Right, so distributing the negative 3i through, we get negative 3i times 10, which is negative 30i, and then negative 3 times negative 15i is plus 45i squared. And then we go back and we say, all right, the i squared is the same thing as negative 1, so we have negative 30i plus 45 times negative 1, and that just makes us a negative 45. And then to officially write it in a plus bi form, we would go negative 45 minus 30i. And that would be the form of the complex number. All right, everybody see that? And it's usually best to write it in the a plus bi form. All right, so let's do one more. What if you had this? Well, what does it look like here? Right, it looks like a binomial times a binomial. So yeah, we're just going to multiply it out using the distributed property twice. So we're going to distribute the 3 to the 2 into the negative 5i. So that would be 6 minus 15i. And then we'll take the 2i and distribute it through. So 2i times 2 is plus 4i. 2i times negative 5i is negative 10i squared. And then we note that um, i squared is negative 1. Right? So this whole thing down here is going to become a positive 10. Right? Don't forget i squared is negative 1. Right? And we've got this negative 15i plus 4i. Those are like terms. We can combine those up. And so we have 6 uh, minus 11i plus 10. Everybody see where that plus 10 is coming from? Because 10, negative 10 times i squared, that's uh, the same thing as negative 10 times negative 1, so it gives you the plus 10. And then we can combine those numbers up to get 16 minus 11i. Right, so adding, subtracting, multiplying complex numbers, not too bad. Very similar to stuff we've done before, right? All right, what if you multiply conjugates together? All right, if you multiply 2 plus 3i times 2 minus 3i, those are conjugates, right, from a previous discussion. Well, if you multiply it out using the, um, the distributed property twice, we would get 4 minus 6i plus 6i minus 9i squared, right? And then we'd say, oh, look, the 6i's, they're opposite signs, so they're going to disappear. i squared is the same thing as negative 1, so this is negative 9 times negative 1, so this really goes down to 4 plus 9. Everybody see that? And this is just a fancy way to write the number 13. All right, so 13 is what this multiplies out to be. All right, these two conjugates multiply out to be the number, the real number, 13. The imaginary part is 0. All right, well, what about these two conjugates down here? All right, call this one number 1 and this one number 2. If you multiply this out using the distributive property twice, we would get 16 plus 4i minus 4i minus i squared, and we notice the 4i's disappear, and we also notice that i squared is the same thing as negative 1, so really this goes down to 16 minus a negative 1, so 16 plus 1, so this is just the number 17. So in both these cases, uh, the real part is just whatever it is, and the imaginary part became 0, right? In fact, that's always going to be true. Whenever you multiply conjugates together, the imaginary part is always going to become 0. All right? It's because the, the two terms in the middle here disappear because they're opposite signs. All right? This is useful when dividing complex numbers. All right? Because, again, we can think of the i as like a square to negative 1, right? So you really have a radical in the, in the denominator. We can rationalize the denominator um, to make it easier to play with if we multiply the top and the bottom by the conjugate of the denominator. So we have to multiply 3 minus i over 3 minus i. Right, so multiply the conjugate, and then when you multiply that through, we get 
60 minus 20i on top, and on the bottom they're conjugates, right? So the middle part's going to disappear. Right? You have 3 times 3, which is 9, then you have 3 times negative i, which is negative 3i, and 3 times positive i, which is positive 3i, those disappear. And you're left with minus i squared, right? 9 minus i squared. And i squared is the same thing as negative 1, so we have 60 minus 20i in the numerator, all over 9 plus 1 in the denominator. Right? 9 plus 1, same thing as 10, so we have 60 plus 20i divided by 10. And we can simplify this down, right? Because that's 60 over 10 plus 20 tenths times i. And we see that 60 over 10 goes to 6, and 20 over 10 goes to 2. So this, this number, 20 over 3 plus i, can be rewritten as 6 plus 2i. It's easier to do other mathematics with 6 plus 2i than it might be to do with 20 over 3 plus i. Right? This just looks more complicated than the 6 plus 2i. All right, so that's the idea on dividing um, complex numbers. We can uh, rationalize the denominator by multiplying by the, by the conjugate of the denominator. So let's quickly walk through this one. 7i over 5 minus 3i. So again, we can multiply the numerator and the denominator of this fraction by the conjugate of the denominator, 5 plus 3i over 5 plus 3i and then we can multiply that out. When you do that, you get 35i plus 21i squared divided by 25 minus 9i squared. Remember why that happens in the denominator. Change all, change all i squares to negative 1. And when you do that, you get a positive 21 times negative 1 goes to, you get the minus 21 there, and then negative 9 and then times a negative 1 gives you the positive 9 in the denominator. Then that can be written as Right? But now it's best to write it in a plus bi form. So I'm going to rewrite this as negative 21 over 34 plus 35 over 34 times i. So the coefficient of i is 35 over 34. The imaginary part of this complex number is 35 divided by 34. And that's it. All right? So uh, it might be easier to play with this number than 7i over 5 minus 3i. Right, so it's just the idea of dividing complex numbers. Very similar to rationalizing the denominator uh, when we had roots, when we had square roots in the denominator. All right, so that's it for now on complex numbers. Um, study well. Please let me know if you have any questions.